Well, I've said to a few of our senior U.S. customers that I'm concerned that if we don't change how we operate our defense enterprise, that we might not be able to maintain an effective deterrent in the next five to 10 years vis-a-vis -vis China and Russia and others. So I, that's what actually compelled me to accept the offer uh, to come join Lockheed Martin Executive Management, because I think that we have an opportunity to sort of pathfind a way to maintain that effective deterrent. Okay, and so China, Russia, it is technology the front on which you think this is being fought, it's not numbers, it's, it's, the, it's the sophistication. Of it, the it is technology and sophistication in that the defense industry and enterprise, meaning the military services, the civilian leadership, is traditionally very good at innovation in the physical world. You know, we've gone from, you know, propeller aircraft to jet aircraft to supersonic jet aircraft to stealth supersonic jet aircraft um, over, you know, a few decades. Uh, what we're not as adept at yet is innovation in the digital world, which is largely, largely based on software. Um, our commercial cohorts in uh, semiconductors, uh, distributed cloud computing, uh, quantum physics and qu quantum computing thereby, uh, and other 5G 21st century digital technologies are moving much faster than we are. Um, and they can do that because software uh, built upon itself can be more quickly developed in a faster cycle than physical objects can be, like aircraft and satellites and, and ships and submarines, which take years or decades to advance and develop because of the physics. They are things that need to uh, deal with metallurgy, electrical engineering, and other kinds of issues, including um, astrophysics that a software code writer doesn't have to deal with. I, I think the AUKUS agreement is really important because it creates the policy at the top of governments, the three governments involved for sure, that we are going to cooperate on security affairs closer than perhaps ever before since World War II. Uh, together. Now, that should open up a lot of avenues for uh, the thing we just talked about. What is the collaboration scheme that makes the most sense based on capabilities, resources, etc.? So I'm very encouraged by that. Um, the but way that... French, I mean, wouldn't you want the French in that? Is that of course, yeah, well, ultimately, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a government decision, not, mm -hmm. not ours, uh, to influence it or to attempt to. But yeah, you'd want the widest possible net of like-minded countries uh, thinking this way uh, and acting that way. Uh, what I am hoping to do with Lockheed Martin, at least in our case, is to continue the existing practice, which is we will be involved in a campaign to sell a product or system to a country. That country will ask us, well, if I'm gonna buy this from you, then we would like some industrial investment as, along with that product sale. That's called offset uh, or industrial uh, collaboration. We should be doing what we talked about earlier, which is what can we do in the UAE, for example, that would make sense in general, whether we're selling them that product or not. What should we do in the UK in general, whether we're selling a product or not? And so really flip this whole thought process back to say, you know, if we can ally with the UK based on government policy, an umbrella that allows us to do that, um, an attractive investment environment, capital markets that are global that will help us support doing that, and we have a good business case as a company to, to launch that business, we should just launch the business here, or in UAE, or in Japan, or Australia, wherever it makes sense to do that. So. That's what I'm going to try to do under the, in this environment, which is is becoming increasingly amenable to this, to to really change or, or augment, I'll say, the way we do industrial cooperation now. The F-35, which is kind of our sort of signature program right now, uh, in the company, it's about you know between depending on what you're counting, 25 and 30 percent of the revenue of the entire company. Um, say that again. The F-35 is what is. 25 it's to 30 percent of, of the entire Martin. revenue revenue stream of the company. But hasn't that? Do you not look at that and think, is that a burden to carry? Because no one does anybody look at it and think, this is how you should do it. This is how you should create a, a, a you know, strike fighter. Is it? Is that? Is uh, well, 
let me let me come back to that uh, because the point I wanted to make for your question, what sir, was that th there's a significant proportion of F35 content that comes out of the UK. Yeah, no, that's right. So whether it's BAE, many many other suppliers we have, so we're very integrated on that program too. So you know. It, Aerospace, oh, by the way, submarines, we do combat systems, BAE can do the, the hulls. You know, there's a lot of integration and, and collaboration here and room for more in those areas and others. So yeah, I'm, I'm very encouraged. 